Hi, this is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. I'm going to show you how to create the look of a powerful hand-drawn ink panel of an aged graphic novel or comic book from a photo. And then, how to quickly and easily replace the drawing. Before we begin, you can get the most current version of Photoshop and Lightroom and 20 gigabytes of cloud storage all together for only $7.99 per month. Click the link in my video's description to get the discount. Find an image that you'd like to use for this project. I downloaded this one from Shutterstock. I provided this stained aged paper texture that we'll use later in the tutorial. Its link is located in the video description below. If you want to replace the background with a simple but dramatic gradient, you'll need to separate your subject from its background by making a selection around your subject. If you want to keep the existing background of your image, you can bypass the next few steps. There are many ways to make a selection around your subject. However, for this example, I'll use the Quick Selection tool with a size of 10 pixels. If you're using this tool as well, you may need to adjust this amount depending on the size and resolution of your image. Drag the tool inside your subject to select it. To remove areas of the selection, press and hold Alt or Option as you drag over those areas. To check your selection, press Q on your keyboard to see it as a quick mask. To revert it back into a selection, press Q again. Click the Refine Edge button or go to Select and Refine Edge. I did an in-depth tutorial on Refine Edge, so if you'd like to watch it, I provided its link in my video's description below. Drag the radius a bit to the right and output it as a new layer. Control click or command click on the new layer icon to make a new layer below the active layer. We'll fill the empty layer with a gradient. To do this, click the Gradient tool and click the Radial Gradient icon. Click the Gradient bar to open the Gradient Editor. Click this black and white thumbnail and click the lower left Stop. Click the color box and in the Brightness field, type in 10. Then click OK or press Enter or Return. Click the lower right stop and the color box. In the Brightness field, type in 60. Then click OK or press Enter or Return twice to close both windows. Go to the top left corner of your document and drag the gradient tool to the opposite corner. Then release. We'll convert our image into a smart object so we'll be able to edit the effects that we'll be adding to it as well as allow us to replace our subject without having to redo any of the effects. To make it into a smart object, click the top layer to make it active and shift click on the bottom layer to make all the layers active. Click the icon at the upper right of the layers panel and click Convert to Smart Object. Make a copy of the layer by pressing Ctrl or Command J. Name the top layer Photocopy and the layer below it Graphic Pen. Hide the top layer. We want our foreground and background colors black and white respectively. If they aren't, press D on your keyboard. Go to Filter and Filter Gallery. Open the Sketch folder and click Graphic Pen. I'll make the stroke length 10, however, you may want to adjust this amount depending on the size and resolution of your image. Make the Light Dark Balance 100 and the Stroke Direction Right Diagonal. Then click OK. The reason we made our foreground and background colors black and white respectively is because the Graphic Pen filter takes on those colors. 
For example, if our foreground and background colors were inverted, our image would look like this. Make the top layer visible and active. Go back to Filter and Filter Gallery. Click Photocopy. I'll make the detail 5 and the darkness 50, but again, feel free to experiment with these amounts. Remember, you can always change it at any time because all the effects that we're adding to our image are smart filters. Change the blend mode to multiply. Next, we'll make the border. But first, to save space in the layers panel, let's collapse the smart filters by clicking the small black triangles on the right of the layers. Click the New Layer icon to make a new layer. Name it Border. Fill the empty layer with any color. I'll press Ctrl or Command plus Delete to fill it with white, which is my background color. Reduce the fill to 0%. This makes anything inside the layer invisible, but it'll retain the visibility of all the effects that we'll be adding to it. Double click the thumbnail to open the layer style window. Click Stroke. Click the color box and pick White. Then click OK. Make the size 8 pixels and the position inside. If you're using version CC, click the plus sign to the right of the stroke to add another stroke. If you're using a version earlier than CC, I'll show you what to do in a minute. Make the second stroke active and click the color box. Pick black and click OK. Make the size 12 pixels and click OK. If you're using a version earlier than CC, click Inner Glow. The blend mode is normal, the opacity is 100%, and the color is black. The choke is 100%, and the size is 12 pixels. Then click OK. Next, we'll add a caption. First, let's collapse the effects. Click the New Layer icon to make a new layer. Name it Caption or Text Banner. Open your rectangular marquee tool. Go to a corner and drag out a selection approximately this size. Fill it with white and deselect it by pressing Ctrl or Command D. Double click its thumbnail to open its layer style window. Click Stroke and the color box. Pick Black and click OK or press Enter or Return. Make the size approximately 4 pixels and the position is inside. Click Drop Shadow. Make the Blend Mode Normal and the Opacity is 100%. I'll make the angle of the Drop Shadow 45 degrees, but you can make it whatever looks good to you. You can also type in the amount. Make the distance anywhere between 10 to 20 pixels and click OK. Right now the caption banner is on top of the border. We want to place it underneath the border. I'll collapse the effects and drag the banner layer underneath the border layer. Next, we'll add a caption on top of the banner. Open your horizontal type tool and font list. I'm using red state blue state BB italic. If you'd like to use it as well, its link is in my video's description. I'll begin with a size of 72 points, sharp, and left alignment. Click to the left of the banner and type out your caption. To adjust its size, highlight your line of text and drag your cursor over the T symbol to the left or right. If you want to make a character larger, 
highlight that character and increase its point size. To reposition your caption over the banner, open your Move tool and just drag it. To save more space in the Layers panel, let's group the caption and banner into a folder. To do this, shift click on the banner to make it active as well and press Ctrl or Command G. Name it Caption or Text Banner. Make the top layer active. Open the aged paper texture I provided. To place it into your document, drag it onto the tab of the comic book and without releasing your mouse or pen, press and hold Shift as you drag it onto your image. Then release. Pressing and holding Shift kept the paper texture centered over your document. To resize and or rotate it, open your transform tool by pressing Ctrl or Command T. If the paper texture is larger than your comic book document, press Ctrl or Command 0 to see the transform's entire bounding box. Go to a corner, and when you see a diagonal double arrow, press and hold Alt or Option plus Shift as you drag it in or out. If your comic book panel is vertical and you want to rotate the paper texture, go back to a corner, and when you see a curved double arrow, press and hold Shift as you rotate it 90 degrees. Once your paper texture is sized to your comic book panel, click the check mark at the top. Change its blend mode to multiply. Let's name it Paper Texture. Next, I'll show you how to quickly and easily replace your image. Double click on any smart object to open its source. Go to File and Place Embedded. Find and click a new image and click Place. The Place Embedded command places an image into your document as a smart object. As you can see in this example, I already removed the background from the subject. If you need to do the same for your image, just repeat the steps that you did earlier. If you want to make the subject larger, first zoom out of your document by pressing Ctrl or Command and the minus key on your keyboard a few times. Before I resize it, I'd like to flip it so he faces the other way. To do this, I'll go to Edit, Transform, and Flip Horizontal. Go to a corner and drag your subject out or in and reposition it. Then press Enter or Return. To hide the old subject under your new subject, Click off the eyeball next to the layer of your old subject. Feel free to make more adjustments in its size and position. When you're done, close the tab of the smart object. When you see this window, click Yes to save the changes. This is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. Thanks for watching.